So the rest of these slides are practice problems. Uh, in this first slide, we're looking at a cross glazing reaction. Um, so let's just go ahead and analyze this real fast. Uh, we have benzaldehyde, which has no alpha hydrogens. So we know that this molecule is going to be our target. And the other molecule must form the enolate. And then the first step only has sodium hydroxide and water, but the second step has hydrochloric acid and heat. That gives us no doubt that we are going through to the condensation product. So uh, let's go ahead and work this out step by step. So if we were to pull off our alpha hydrogen, we would have our enolate, which would then want to attack our carbonyl compound. So this is our carbonyl carbon. We know that it's going to have an O minus coming off of it. It'll have the hydrogen. And then it'll also have benzene. So from here, it would get protonated because there's water around. And we also just can't leave that negative charge. So that's what we would have at the end of step one. Now in step two, we're going to add in acid. So we will end up protonating the hydroxy group. And we know the purpose of protonating a hydroxyl group is to get it to leave. So by having the water leave, we formed a carbocation. That's going to make our alpha proton much more acidic now. Remember, any time that deprotonating something would stabilize it um, is going to mean that that proton is much more acidic. So we can use water. to deprotonate to give us our aldol condensation product, which is an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. So we know that we did it right. This next practice problem is a synthesis problem. And one of the first things that you might notice here, um, other than the sudden addition of some carbons, is that the carbonyl that appears in the starting material does not show up in the product. So um, noticing that the double bond is in the alpha beta position to where the carbonyl used to be, I would say that was likely the outcome of an aldol condensation reaction. And the loss of the carbonyl must have happened in the last step then because the carbonyl is necessary for an aldol reaction. So. Using this product, I'm going to go ahead and try and figure out what our other carbonyl compound must have been. It would be these seven carbons. So our target must be benzaldehyde. And then if we got rid of the carbonyl um, as our last step, then we must have done um, some sort of either Wolf-Kishner or Clemenson reduction in order to get there. I'm gonna go with Wolf-Kishner. And that material would have been this compound here. So in order to get to there, we would have had to react with benzaldehyde. So let's go through stepwise and do an addition and then a condensation. So if we add in benzaldehyde and 10% sodium hydroxide, we would end up with our beta hydroxy carbonyl, which is our aldol addition product. And then by adding in acid and heat, we can get to our condensation product. And then through Wolf Kishner, we can get rid of our carbonyl to get our final product. Okay. 
This next synthesis problem that I chose, I thought was really, really clever. So you can see the product is an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. This must be the outcome of an aldol condensation. So the first thing I would do is backtrack to the addition product. So we would have our seven membered ring, our five membered ring, here's our carbonyl, and then there must have been a hydroxyl group here in the addition product. If we dehydrated this with a strong acid and heat, we would get to our product. So then from here, um, do a little retro aldol analysis and recognize that this bond was the one that was formed. So if we can imagine breaking that, we would be looking at a large monocyclic compound that would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten members. So let's try to draw that out. So if I go through and do a little numbering, I can put my carbonyl on carbon one, and then also carbon number six must have a carbonyl as well, uh, because once that bond breaks, there would have to be a carbonyl there in order for that hydroxyl group to have been there. So what this tells me is that in order to get between these two molecules, um, I probably had sodium hydroxide and we could go ahead and say low temperature and that would end up creating a bond between carbon two and carbon six to get to my um, previous step. So that's just an aldol addition product. Now, the really tricky part here is how did we get from our starting material to here? So notice that these carbonyls are directly across from each other and in between them is six carbons in either direction. And the way that that was formed, we can see by drawing in a slightly different way. This would be just another way of drawing that compound. And that could be done through uh, oxidative cleavage of the alkene. So there are two different ways that you could accomplish this actually and I'm going to write them both out just so you can kind of try to remember this from I believe is OCHEM 1. Both of these situations would give you cleavage of the alkene to give you two ketones. So really cool problem. So this question is a mechanism question and it looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. My advice would be to take it stepwise and instead of thinking about how do I get from here to here, focus first on how do these two things combine to get here and then you can worry about the next step. So this starts off with an alpha beta unsaturated ester and a primary primary amine. So this is telling us that uh, we are going to do a Michael addition. So the primary amine is going to attack in the beta position, which gives us this intermediate. Um, now we have to do a little bit of proton shuttling. So I think the best option here would be to take another equivalent of the amine and use it to deprotonate the ammonium and then use the ammonium that you just made to protonate the enolate that was formed. So it is actually the use of the amine as a proton shuttle that helps end up with this situation where a single amine reacted with two equivalents of the 
alpha, beta, unsaturated ester, since one equivalent of the amine is always going to be tied up as a proton shuttle, um, you just end up attacking another equivalent of the alpha, beta, unsaturated ester. And then you're gonna have some of the same proton shuttling happening. And that gets us to our intermediate. Now in the next step, we add in base. The base was not specified, so I'm just gonna go with hydroxide. And um, the really the only thing that this could do uh, would be to deprotonate the ester. So now that we have this enolate, um, it's going to want to attack an ester. So this becomes essentially a Dieckmann condensation. And we are going to create a ring that is one, two, three, four, five, six members, including the nitrogen. And then by collapsing these electrons to form a pi bond and kicking out methoxide, we get to our product. Uh, if you're having a hard time seeing uh, where that came from. Let's just do a little bit of labeling. This would be carbon one, two, three for the nitrogen, four, five, six. And this would be the bond that was formed when the enolate attacked the carbonyl. Okay, this last problem is a predict the product situation. So we're starting off with a beta keto ester and introducing sodium ethoxide. Notice that ethoxide matches our ester. So that's usually a pretty good sign that we're gonna be deprotonating our alpha carbon. And then in step two, we're adding in an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Um, this is telling us that it would like us to do a Michael addition. So now we're here. And this problem actually does something kind of wild. Um, instead of going and, de and protonating, because we don't actually have any sources of protons in this reaction. Remember, we already did step one, so theoretically we don't have any of those reagents anymore. So all we have is this, and nothing to necessarily come and get a proton from. So if we're trapped here at our enolate, then it's reasonable to think that um, we could actually come and attack the other ester, which would then reform the pi bond, kick out the ethoxy group. And then the last step is just the aqueous acid workup that you would usually add after a Claisen type condensation. So also the formation of a six membered ring is going to be a very favorable reaction. So that helps contribute to why this occurs rather than just protonating here. The other thing is that if we just protonated here, we would be consolidating yet even more atoms into one molecule. But if we attack intramolecularly as we did and then kick out ethoxide, we are actually creating another molecule, which is going to be favored by entropy. So this problem is pretty crazy. This isn't necessarily one that I'd be putting on a quiz or exam. I just thought it was cool. Um, and it kind of shows you some of the like extreme variety that can occur with this type of chemistry. These last several slides are just um, some extra figures from the book. So I'm not going to explain them. They're just here for reference. So I just wanted to explain that. Um, they summarize the reactions in a pretty nice way. So I thought that'd be useful to anybody who does not have the textbook available to them. So these slides are available on Canvas and you can go and look at these uh, in your own time.